Hello and welcome, this is Rufamonger, and this is my tips and tricks guide for Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat 11. So if you're not familiar with these types of videos, what I'm going to be doing is going over a lot of his basic moveset, you know, just want to make some works, and then we're just going to be going to some more advanced stuff here, you know, a lot of, well, tips and tricks, uh, little things to know about the character, and this kind of game plan you should be looking for. So without any further ado, let's just start with the basics. All right, so now let's talk about his basic move set. So we'll talk about the competitive variation specific moves in a moment here. That'll be further on the video, but let's just talk about the universal moves. Although, to be fair, to warn you, some of these moves will be replaced by the variation specific moves. But anyways, so first move here is the Fire Skull. This is kind of his signature move here. The Fire Skull uh, was, if you're you know, an old school player here. It was his only move besides switching in, uh, to the enemy character in Mortal Kombat 1. He could throw fireballs and that's it, right? Uh, so, as a fireball projectile in this game, it's very serviceable. It's workmanlike. I would not really put it among the better ones in the game, but it doesn't have to be because it's there to supplement his game plan. So, a basic hit here is 6% uh, and it's a high, so you, know, you can duck it, right? And you can burn a bar to do two skulls at a time here and that kind of eats up a lot of screen real estate like it's very handy to have actually uh, in that regard but once again this is kind of a supplemental tool but still it's a nice fireball to have next up the soul steal this is definitely the signature move right so Shang Tsung well he steals your soul and he becomes you so when you are the enemy character you will only be them for a short amount of time here we're about to transform back there we go so you're not the character for too too long uh, but when you are that character, you are basically a better version of that character. So say like a stand 3 universally always does 5% damage, right? Now when we switch over, we're going to do stand 3. And hey, it did more damage. So what's up with that? You will have a damage boost while you're in the Soul Steel mode. You will always do more damage than normal with the enemy's moves. And on top of that, you also get all their access to all their crushing blows and all that fun stuff. Now for the move itself, it is crazy. Like, you see the range on that? Like, it's actually an amazing poke. Like, uh, ridiculously good. Uh, it's a little bit negative. Some characters can punish it. It really depends matchup to matchup, right? But the range it controls is kind of total, as you can see here. Like, so this is a threat range. So uh, this range here, you can very easily get nabbed by the Soul Steel. And of course, it's an amazing combo ender, too. You can do a lot of, you know, fun stuff with it as a combo ender. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a signature move. If you don't like being the enemy character, like if you just want this for the move itself, well, unfortunately, there's no real way to prevent it. I guess you could say you're not going to be the character for too long, as you can switch over here. And uh, just as a quick note, while you are soul stealing, uh, as long as you're moving or in the middle of a mood or holding block, you won't turn back. But as soon as you stand still for basically a split second, once the timer is already allotted, you will turn back. But you can use these moments. Uh, kind of just movements and all that kind of stuff to prevent that uh, happening if you don't want that to happen just yet. But yeah, overall, fantastic move. The corpse drop. So that's a down four three. And it's, it's accurate. You drop a big old fat corpse on him, right? Uh, this might be his secret best move. Um, as we'll get into like the very talk about ground eruption, like that's also very good and all, but just as a move, it's fantastic. So there are several moves like this in the game. Uh, but this one kind of is just better. The hitbox is really big on that, as you see here. We're kind of hitting behind the enemy's head. Does 9%. It's an overhead. And you can burn a bar to explode it. And the explosion is a low. And on top of that, so say you just barely miss with it, right? The explosion has a massive range, much larger than the actual corpse itself. So if you miss, you can still blow it up and just make it go also it makes the move less negative on block if you happen to hit it just a little too close and they block it and it kind of can introduce a little bit of a game of you know is he gonna explode it or not so yeah really good really really good um once again here we're talking about the fireball being complimentary this is one of the things that helps complement and with that and the ground eruption if you're in that uh, variation it just makes his uh, presence at a range very 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 strong and I suppose I should note, uh, it does come in four flavors. So we have close, medium, far, and very far. So by holding up or no direction or forward or up, you will get your choice of what direction it'll come in at. So you can always reach anyone at any point in the screen, no matter what with this move. And that's another reason why it's really, really good. Next one here is the Sorcery Rush, back forward four. So this move is similar to quite a few other moves in the game here, a uh, sliding style move. Now it hits mid, not low, 
And um, I won't compare it to, say, uh, Sub-Zero, which is the gold standard. Uh, it's not on that level, but still, it's uh, very valuable in, you know, a lot of regards. Especially if, uh, say, you block certain moves at roughly this distance that you could normally couldn't hit with, like, say, 4-2 because it's much too slow. And being able to hit it with this, that's really cool. Um, it also does 9%, so it's also a pretty decent combo ender if you're either uh, not in the variation with uh, ground eruptions or you just don't want to go for the soul steal or something like that. It's also a perfectly serviceable combo ender. And in the corner, it's a better combo ender than most. So, yeah, it's a workhorse of a move, but it's definitely not something to build your offense around. But don't forget it exists because it is pretty decent. Now, we have switched our variation over because there is another basic move that you're probably not going to see too often because one variation is a lot more popular than the other one, and that's Crashing Flames. And this is a base move, but it is overwritten by the Ground Eruption Variation specific move. So as you see here, well, as advertised, I guess those are flames and they're certainly crashing in. Um, it's a bit of a range poke if you want to use it that way. It does hit mid both hits and can EX it here for a third and final hit. Uh, it does have a bit of a fatal flaw if you're inclined to use it, say, as like a block string ender kind of thing, in that there is a large enough gap that you can fatal blow in between it. Uh, but still, at a certain range here, like, even if you flawless block in between the hits here, it doesn't really matter, right? Like, what are you going to do about it? Not too much, right? Uh, so, it's something you got to play around with. Uh, it's definitely, I would say, not one of his better moves, to be brutally honest. And once again... You're probably going to very rarely see it as uh, the variation that's popular with Shang Tsung is the one that has this move overwritten by another move, but still, hey, it exists. Now, let's move on to his competitive variation. So there's a little bit of a naming misnomer, first and foremost. Um, if you pick out the uh, competitive variations in like the actual you know preset mode, uh, they're called one thing, but they're called a different thing in another one. So anyways, uh, this one is Fire and Brimstone slash Warlock because it is called literally both things. So let's talk first up here, the first move that is unique to it, and that's the Inferno Skull. And this is your base fireball move here, the EX, and it lets you EX it a second time. And I got to be brutally honest with you guys, it's it's bad. It's bad. It's very bad. So it does have a crushing blow attached to it in that if the enemy does uh, not get hit by any of the moves other than the final move, uh, it will be a crushing blow, as you can see here. Uh, similar to Sonya's, right? But the thing is, for Sonya, she doesn't have to commit to a full bar before uh, doing this, right? So this is the only possible follow-up. So it's just, it's not very threatening. Now, if you manage to hit the enemy and you can kind of... Hit confirm from, like I say, a close distance. Like, if you're in the corner, EX Fireball actually has some good uses in the corner, which we'll talk about later in the video, because uh, some of his corner potential is a little limited. But I guess if you're just looking to dump and win the match, I guess that's something. But other than that, man, it's not very good. But we got good news for you. Because while that is not very good, we got the ground eruption here. And the ground eruption is very good. And the reason why this one is the more popular variation over the other one. So ground eruption, well... It's kind of like Hell Sparks if you played MKX, um, or you know if you played MK3. Well, then hey, you know these fireballs are back, right? Or MK9 as well. And uh, so he has the fireballs come from the ground, and you can aim these as well here. So that's the close version, and you can do a fire version by holding forward. So he can control kind of multiple points of the screen with this. And if the first one hits, then the second one will hit because it always kind of knock them into it, right? And you can also EX this, and this is one of the reasons why it's very popular. Because EX is the launcher. So you can go for, say, a basic combo here. And that's like over 300. That's pretty good mid-screen for anyone's standards, right? And yeah, that just makes it really good. So uh, with the corpse drop, with the basic fireball, and now with the threat of the ground eruption, he can kind of make mid-screen a minefield. Now, there are ways to punish this move character to character. Uh, some characters, it's a lot more difficult than others, and really also it's distance pendant. I would not recommend doing it in a block string at the very least if they're very close. Further away, you can get away with a lot more stuff. But um, it's his main combo move. Once again here, it turns any uh, hit confirm into an easy combo, and it just helps him fill the screen with garbage, which is kind of one of the main things he's about, right? So this is a really fantastic move. And it's, hey, it's good, and this is the reason why you picked this variation. Moving on to the second competitive variation, this one is Soul Taker or Spellmaster, depending on where you picked it. Because <laughs> once again, there's some naming bugs with his movesets. Uh, but this one has three moves here. So first one is the Screaming Soul. That's back forward one, and it replaces the basic Skull Fireball here. 
Now, the first thing you probably notice is it does more damage. It does 8% instead of 6%. And you can also hold the move. So you can give it a slight delay. And you can hold it all the way. And you can also cancel out of it for the cost of one defensive bar. All you have to do is hit down. So, for the most part, it's just a better version of the basic fireball. And that's fine, right? And also, if you are willing to burn a bar, then all of a sudden, we turn into Superman in, from Injustice here. Because this move here just becomes a massive beam as you can tell and it look it hits like it looks like all that beam is a hurt box uh it will hit you all along the length of the beam so in that regard here if you're just looking for an easy hit here also as you can see it does quite a bit of damage 12 percent right uh if you're looking for a hit here if you're looking for some chip because it has to be jumped here there's no ducking under this right um then you've got something to work with here so yeah, between the cancels and all that kind of fun stuff here, you can do like cancels you know, from a string and then, you know, get plus frames. Certain moves are going to be uh, better than others. But yeah, so it's a nice move here. Actually, it's a pretty decent move here. Uh, it's the only shame is, once again, it doesn't have ground uh, eruption in this variation. Thus, it's just nothing can really compare to that because it's definitely the best move. Next up, we have Scatter Souls. And this is kind of the unfortunate move of this variation. Not that the move is bad. But it overwrites Corpse Drop, and Corpse Drop's definitely a lot better than this move. But uh, just to show you here, uh, this move is a big old explosion. And yes, you can DD exit, and it comes a very different move, which we'll talk about in a second here. Um, so this move is a bit modular, so you can hold it. You see here the screen's shaking, right? And holding it obviously does make it do more damage. But if you manage to hold it for a couple ticks, it'll actually make the move advantage on block. Now... As for, you know, being able to do much with it, <laughs> with that advantage, eh, they're not going to really gonna let you stand still and charge it in their face, right? Now, uh, you can uh, indeed cancel out of this move here, just hit down, down. Uh, but, yeah, it's uh, all right, I guess, as a move. Uh, the big part of the move is the EX. So, the EX, he tosses a big old green firewall and only does 6%. However, it has an absurd, absurd, absurd amount of hit stun, meaning you can basically combo after it no matter where you are on screen. At all but the most extreme like, max range of uh, the screen moves here, uh, you can always get a couple dashes and follow it with like a forward 2-4. Uh, That's how much hit stun this move has. So in that regard, it's pretty good. Uh, the only thing is you kind of have to toss it out raw full screen, right? And that's kind of the problem. Uh, especially because if you're willing to burn a bar, you got a much better move to burn bar with, right? Um, so the move, it's interesting, I'll say that. That's the nicest thing I could say. Uh, but it certainly isn't better than Corpse Drops, uh, the move it replaces. So our final move here is the Soul Well. That's a uh, down back two, and see here, it's a nice little ornament in the sky. If you hit the move again, you'll cash it out and you'll get 4%. Now, that doesn't seem like much, and it isn't. However, the thing here is this. So, the more you hit the enemy, you see this kind of essence going into the orb here? The more you hit the enemy, and then you cash out, you get a lot more health back. So, that's kind of the value. So, you just want to chuck it up here, you know, get a couple hits in here, and you're good to go, and then cash it out, and get some health back. So, ways to get health back is fairly rare in this game. There's only a handful of moves that can do it. And... You know, in that regard, hey, it's pretty interesting. So there's a little bit of setup, which is annoying. Um, you got, you got to definitely do it from farther away, otherwise you're going to get hit in the noggin, right? But still, it is a way to get health back. That's rare, so it is interesting. So now I would like to talk about some of his more notable normals. Uh, now, just to get the elephant out of the room here, we have 424. That's going to get its own section here. So let's talk about some of the other stuff here. Uh, first up here, let's talk down four. So down four, while well, it doesn't have some of the same range of uh, other moves that kind of have this visual look, it does have a lot of their properties in that this lets you low profile stuff. So when he's like kind of really into uh, the frames here and doing the move, he's lower to the ground than a normal duck is, meaning he can actually go under some mids. Now even as a move to nine frame startup here for a quick low like this is not even that bad. Maybe it's not best in class, but certainly serviceable, and the range is, you know, workable. So in that regard, it's also pretty good. But keep in mind, once again, the low-profile trick here. So test it out, because certain things aren't always going to work, right? I'll just be honest with you. Uh, but it does keep him lower to the ground than a regular duck, and it will let him go under things that a normal duck cannot, and that is very handy to have. 
Next up, we have Forward 4. Now, Forward 4, as you see here, it's a kind of ridiculous looking kick, <laughs> kick honestly. Like, you know, considering uh, the soul magic and all that kind of stuff, it's a ridiculous little Lindy hop here. Uh, but the move here, 7%, that's not amazing. Uh, but the big deal here is it is advantage on block here. So you see here, it's plus 5 on block. Plus on block moves are for the most part pretty rare in this game, so any source of plus frames is always very welcome. Now the thing is, yes, the move is indeed high, and if it's a high, that means they can totally neutral duck and an uppercut or whatever, right? However, keep this in mind, it's usually not too wise to neutral duck against Shang Tsung, uh, considering the threat of Corpse Drop, which is an overhead already, the threat of forward 2-4 which is a very long range mid uh, just neutral ducking at this range uh, considering the wealth of his options eh, if they start doing it then hey by all means like start going you know forward 2-4 four, start tossing more corpse drops is right uh, but second they're a little you know finicky and willing to block then hey get in their face get your plus frames or you know hey if it hits hey, the seven percent that's awesome too right but yeah once again plus frames are fairly rare in this game to be advantage after you already hit your move so having a source of that is handy, even with a little bit of a handicap of being a high. Now, one I don't see too many people use, but I think it's actually quite handy to have, is stand three up two. That's this guy here. Now, first up, just before anything else here, stand three up two. If you want to, you can actually finish the string here and hit down two, and you'll have just this kind of big lava rake here and knock him back full screen. That's all well good here. But what it is, is his most damaging starter. See? So it says 97 damage. So many combos, you'll see start, you'll be like back 1-1 one, one, or 4-2-4 four, four or something. And see here, 58 damage. While certainly, you know, not the worst, right? It's not incredibly damaging. Uh, but this move here does 97 at the start. So if you're just looking for a raw damage after a punish, this is going to be one of your best bets. Um... It can turn a very simple punish here into a pretty good chunk of damage. So that's almost 35%, right? The normal combo we showed earlier with the base B and B here, that was like 30%. So that's almost 5% more damage. And that's not nothing. You got to take your damage at every source. So as a pure punish tool, because once again here, this is 11 frames. That's for the range too, especially considering like it can hit from pretty far. That's not nothing. Uh, so just keep in mind when you're going for like punch situations, just your old boy here, stand three up two, uh, does a lot of damage. Another very good notable normal is back three. So he kind of gives you a little shin kick here. Comes in at a very respectable 10 frames, quite quick for uh, low that could potentially go into a full combo. So first thing here, as he ducks and that's, you no, know, it's real, right? You can actually have uh, highs go over your head with this move here. So that's always very handy. Uh, once again here, the frame of 10 st uh, frame startup is very quick here and uh, it's very good for scramble situations here where you're trying to go for like just more like you know just a little bit of a mash so it leads in the two big things here first up this is kind of the boring one uh but back three down four just a quick little sweet combo here very safe on blocks only negative five on block and it's an easy basically 10 percent if it hits and while i know that's not the end of the world sometimes you need this as a uh, just you know a good check right now it can also go into this guy here which is back three up four. So back three up four, I, I know it looks very silly looking, right? But what it is, is hit confirmable into the usual combo stuff, right? So that's really good, you know, easy damage, right? Now it comes with a bit of a risk to be sure in that the uh, gap here is large. Like now I'm not even talking like a um, flawless block because yeah, you can obviously flawless block it, but you can literally just uppercut him out of it, right? But that also can kind of lead to a bit of a guessing game where you can just go for this and then you can have a panic uppercut afterwards and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, just um, the fact that it can low profile a bit here. It's very quick, which uh, while he has some really good strings, you know, once again, we'll talk about forward 2-4 uh, in a moment here. Uh, that's a lot slower, 17 frames and 10 frames. So when you're in someone's face here and scrambling for position, he doesn't really have much in the way of fast mids. Like um, back one is 14 frames, right? And it just kind of all goes from there, like, his moves are a little bit on the slower side when he gets a little up close. So when the scramble situation happens and you're just, you know, vying for this dominance up close and you don't want to just settle for a down one, then check out back three because it's basically the next best thing you're going to get here. And once again, even though, yeah, there's the gap, you can still potentially lead to a full combo. And that's, you know, a risk worth taking. 
All right, so now let's talk 424, because this is kind of one of the really big moves here. Uh, definitely, I'd say pound for pound gonna be the workhorse string. So first up and foremost, it you know has some range to it, right? Like it can hit from really far away. And even if you manage to miss it, it hits from roughly this distance here, just a little further out than like the round one start position. You also have the follow-up, which is a low. And then from there, hey, you know, easy hit confirm into combo and all that fun stuff, right? So for that alone, before anything else, it does its job, right? Mid-starter, uh, a lot of range. Uh, while the frame data, you would think, on block is not amazing, negative 11. As you see here, the pushback is as such that, like, you know, this far away, negative 11 doesn't really mean much. Like, you know, you still got to be defensive, right? You can't just keep tossing out buttons, sure. But uh, there's definitely no punish coming your way because no one has a move fast enough to punish that from that distance. So pu pushback is very respectable and there's no gap to punish here in this uh, specific scenario. So in that regard, it's just really good. You can just chuck it out uh, when you're at the appropriate range. Also, the arcing um, nature of this punch absolutely swats people out of the air at the beginning of the jump all the time. So if you're like this close and you're worried they're going to jump, You'll just slap them out of the air. You won't really get much after that. Like, you know, you'll get your quick damage, but it's very difficult to jump at Shang Tsung when he's in 4-2 range because it actually really covers all that air above him and slaps people to the ground like crazy. So I wouldn't do it as anti-air on purpose, but as accidental anti-air when you're just going to go for the string anyways and they try to jump at that distance, you'll slap them down all the time. That's great. Now, if it was just that alone, you know, the big range, the Hicket Firm and all that fun stuff here, it'd still be really good, right? But it has more to offer than just that. So we have forward 242, which is advantage on block, and forward 243. So forward 243 is not advantage on block, as you can tell here. It's a negative five, uh, but there's a reason for it. So let's just go over this quick little dichotomy here. So this move here, 4244, has advantage frames. It's always very good and there's a tiny gap now the gap you can flawless block it just so you know here so if you are looking to flawless block you can do that and then hit up two and get your combo all kind of fun stuff but the gap is small enough that you can't really attack him through it like some other characters have similar moves like Liu kang like Liu kang when he uh, ends the string in his uh, advantage on block move you can actually just like attack him out of it right that only works against Shang Tsung with characters with the exceptionally fast jabs that's six framers so I'm talking like Garrison Sub-Zero. Everyone else, the best they can hope for is a trade or they'll just lose out real bad. So every time you want to do this, you're basically saying, I dare you to flawless block. And of course, uh, especially in the corner, once people like start getting all gummed up on flawless blocking, then you can start throwing them and all that kind of stuff, right? So that's just really, really good. Um, you have to know they're going to be willing to flawless block. Once again, too, you can just kind of just let it rock and do nothing, right? And if they're just sitting there floss blocking, walk forward and just toe tap them, all that kind of fun stuff. It's just good. Now, the forward 243. Say you are playing against a sub zero Garrus, someone who actually can poke you out of it. This move will basically smack them in the noggin. And if it does hit here, this move actually does have a crushing blow attached to it. So as you can see here, it says crushing blow triggers if the combo is a counter or a punish. So this basically is for the few characters that can actually knock him out of it. This is the mash check, basically. If they're willing to mash, this is your please stop mashing button and you'll kick them in the head every time. And once again, totally safe move, right? Uh, you can't really stop him from doing it. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just really quite strong. So yeah, there's not much more to say than that other than this one little bonus feature. Now, while it is mildly difficult, I'm not going to lie to you. So, say you go for the plus on block string. And you actually hit it, right? Like, maybe you weren't intending to hit it or whatever, but you actually hit it. You can actually follow up with it outside of the corner. Now, in the corner, you get some all sorts of corner combos, right? But outside of the corner, you think you're done. But no, you can actually use the ground sparks here. And combo, just the timing's very strict. As you see, I got it right there. And full disclosure, it took me a couple tries. I edited out the screw-ups here. Uh, but it took me a couple tries because it is difficult. But that said, as always, practice makes perfect. So if you're trying to get it here, and there you go, that's the screw-up, right? If you're trying to get it, just practice it here because it is free extra damage that 
you know, you don't have to do anything other than do the move. So if you get this move here mid-screen, just give it a shot, I guess. And just practice, 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 because it is just plain old more damage. So a few notes here on Soul Steel. So just in case you use time stamps to skip ahead here, I did mention this briefly, but while you're actively moving or blocking, you cannot turn back. So I've already burned through the normal expiry date of uh, the Soul Steel already, but since I'm moving, I cannot transform back. So if you're just looking to milk every last second out of it, hey, keep this in mind, right? Uh, I'm just gonna let go now, I'm gonna turn back immediately. There you go. So, but while you're actively moving or blocking, you cannot turn back. So if you're in that kind of rock and a hard place situation where you just did something and didn't work out and then you're gonna turn back, keep it in mind because at least you won't turn back and just get punished for free, right? Uh, and now for our next thing on Soul Steel, we're gonna switch over to Aaron Black just uh, for two layers here. One Aaron Black specific, but one kind of a big deal. So first up, just as a note here for Aaron Black transformations. When you transform into him for the first time, you will always have all eight bullets. Doesn't matter how many bullets he has, you will always have eight bullets. However, on subsequent transformations, your bullet count will remain the same. So, you know, you might have to reload or whatever. Uh, just as a first transformation, it's just, you know, you couldn't do uh, much worse than just, you know, with your limit time, just dumping all the bullets, right? Uh, Aaron normally wants to save them for stuff, but for you, hey, whatever, just... You can just dump them. But yeah, just a little note about that. But now a more important note. Now, what I'm about to show you is not exclusive to Aaron Black transformations, but I think it's best showcased with Aaron Black. So you guys probably know the boot crushing blow, where if he does his drop kick two times in a row, uh, then he'll get the big crushing blow and then just go from there, right? But if you do any other moves in the meantime, you know, you're not gonna get your crushing blow. Like here I am doing all sorts of other stuff, right? Uh, except for the thing of this. So I just did a bunch of other moves, right? I'm going to turn back into him. And hey, what you know? I got my crushing blow. So there is memory for your crushing blows in the transformation. So even though I did a million other things after I transformed back into Shang Tsung, it only cared that the last thing I did while I was Aaron the last time was my boot. So when I turn into Aaron the second time, that's... It's basically starting from there. The last thing I did was my boot, so that's all it cares about. And then when I transform back, I can do whatever I want. And then transform in there and again, and it keeps the memory. So this is a big deal. So a lot of uh, crushing blows have like requirements, like you gotta hit so many moves in a row, or you gotta do so many moves total in the match, or whatever, right? So it will keep the memory of what you're doing between transformations. So in this case here, uh, I could be Aaron, I can shoot all my bullets here, dump them all, and then just end my transformation with a drop kick, right? And then when I turn back to Aaron the next time, the one drop kick, the last thing I did was already in the memory from the last time I was Aaron Black, and then as soon as I transform into it, I can go into it right away, and I'll get that crushing blow. So, what I'm trying to say here, once again, crushing blows are held in the memory. It doesn't care what you're doing as Shang Tsung in the meanwhile, right? It only cares about what you're doing as the character. And as soon as you turn back on the character, it basically starts from that last point onwards. So if you're playing uh, against a character that has very good crushing blows, when you turn into them, please keep this in mind as it is a huge, huge deal. So a quick note on the corpse drop move. So as went over earlier in our video, you can totally aim the move, right? And it has four directions, but you don't have to aim it right away. You can actually wait until the second where the corpse is like at the very top of the screen and then aim it. So you can do the move here and then just wait a split second and then see where your enemy is in accordance with you and then change your direction. So right here, you don't have to input it right right away. Now, not to say you don't have like a, a year to do this, right? It's certainly not a very long window, but I see a lot of people do moves like this. They just they immediately hold their direction, right? But you do have a split second to decide where you want it to go. So just keep that in mind because um, a lot of times people are dashing around or trying to you know, get in one way or the other, jumping. And it gives you just a split second of extra course correction. And I think that's a very handy thing to use while you're trying to use this move. So just for some basic tips and game plan stuff here. First, I do want to mention if you're going for a kill and you're using like a throw, please, please, please keep in mind the throws are actually not equal in this one here. He's the one character where it's not. Uh, the back throw does the usual amount here, but the forward throw will only do 120, not 140. And he'll get 2% health back instead. So it is unique. 
Uh, the damage is split up basically between your damage and the health gain. But if you're going for a pure kill situation, back throw is always going to be better than forward throw. Just because it does do slightly more damage. So just really keep that one in mind. Um, because while I've not personally... Uh, lost the game myself because of Shang Tsung. I actually made another player lose because of that or I literally had one pixel of life left and I managed to roll through and get the win and I'm sure he was fantastically ecstatic about that one. So out of range I feel is where he's at his best. He's definitely not a blender character up close and if you are in the Fire and Brimstone variation slash Warlock variation, one with ground eruption here, I think this is basically the range he wants to be at in most matchups. So Basically, the base fireball and a ground eruption at more of a mid-screen all serves to keep the enemy honest and in place long enough to you have this kind of whomp them with corpse drop over and over and over. Because once again, as far as projectiles go, 9% for a single hit and it's overhead is a lot. Also, once again, you have the EX option here. So we can turn a basic projectile into 15%. And my lord, that is really, really good. So... To me, a lot of what you want to be fishing for most matchups here, because, you know, some characters with a lot of teleports or, you know, weird counter zoning options might not be the best fit for you. But um, stuff like mid-screen ground eruptions here and the odd uh, straight fireball is just there to keep people honest enough for you to just really dump these dead bodies on top of their head uh, and just get that damage in. Also, once again, keep in mind, if you just barely miss with the corpse drops here, the explosion on the EX is much longer range than the actual initial corpse, so you can still smack them. Now, if you're a bit closer, the enemy can jump between the corpse drop and the explosion. There's enough time to block the first and jump the second one, right? But with that in mind here, don't try to EX it too much up close, I would guess I would say here. And also, if that is the case, you definitely have enough time to uppercut it. But if you are stuck in the EX animation, you won't have enough time to uppercut it. So just keep that in mind. But yeah. The main thing here is just really just establish the threat of this here. Because the more you want to do this, the more they're going to want to try to jump in, right? Uh, or dash in or whatever. Just a lot of forward movement. And ground eruption deals with jumps nicely. And a basic skull here will deal with a lot of people dashing in nicely. Uh, so you basically want to establish this threat. And then use the skull and the ground eruption to basically cut out the options to get around that threat. Because once again, I know I'm harping on this, but man, the damage off this basic zoning option is incredible. Now, with all the fireball stuff mentioned here, uh, a lot of times when people come into, I just want to really harp on 424 again. Uh, just as a hit confirm, it's really good. Uh, the options are really good here. The plus frames, the fact it's very safe due to the pushback, the easy hit confirm and all that. And once again... Um, when people start getting really jumpy, the 4-2 portion of the move here is honestly an exceptionally strong anti-air. Like, it's going to be an accidental anti-air 99% of the time, but it will really slap people out of the air when they're kind of just at the beginning of their jump. So, just judicious use of 4-2-4 is very strong. And also, one thing here I don't want to sell short here is Soul Steel as a poke, because the range on Soul Steel is really strong. It owns the whole part here. Once again, if you're not looking at the frame data, the startup is 16 frames. So um, that's basically unreactable. And if you're not already holding block at this distance, you're just got. So people trying to work their way in, all that kind of stuff, it's very easy just to snap them and go. As you see, that's kind of the exact max range of the move. And that's not nothing. So as a poke in your game plan, especially if you're kind of backing up here because uh, people are otherwise kind of frustrated with your zoning and trying to get in, it's just really good. And also, say if you're trying to get on the other one, uh, you know, say your zoning plan's not working out or you're at a health deficit, it's a range that lets you engage from further away than just like the 424. Um, once you start working your way in here, quick little soul steal, and you are more of a threat at that range than a lot of the more traditional options, because you can hit from it further away than you can, like a lot of jumping attacks or 424, that kind of stuff. Now, one big thing to note is the corner. So Shang Tsung is rarely going to be in the corner, because a lot of times he's just going to be mid-screen just, you know, chucking garbage at people. But when you do get to the corner, your options get really limited. As if your basic stuff here, you know, hey, that kind of doesn't work, right? You're, you hit him with the first hit, which is well and good, but then that's all you're going to get. So you got to really start looking for viable alternatives. And uh, one of the ones I like quite a bit here is just the basic skull here. So you can hit him with it here, 
and you can have your advantage here. Generally speaking, might as well dump the bar and get a little more damage here. You get a little more advantage. The damage is not good, as you can tell, but it's better than the literal nothing you're getting otherwise. So just keep that in mind. Also, keeping in mind, some strings, as you can see here, you're not going to be able to hit the skull. So you really got to play around with what works and what doesn't. Like, you know, stuff like that's not going to combo, right? So you got to play around. Like, obviously, um, the sorcerer slide will always work no matter what. So that is an option here, but it does knock them down. Uh, it's a little more advantageous for you to keep them, you know, standing so they don't have a wake up option of a roll or an attack or that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's just something to keep in mind. Now, the main string, if you're going to get actual combos, is going to be 4 2 4. Because at that point, you can kind of just go like 1 1 1 1, like all that kind of fine stuff. You can actually get up to 7 in a row before you can just go to like 1 1 4 and finish the combo. Gravity is a thing right there, so I wasn't actually able to get it um, without it dropping. Now, the one thing to note, if you want the safe way, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, there we go. Uh, generally speaking, the safe way that's like a little less uh, strict on the timing is just go for 5 stand jabs and go for 1, 1, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 1, 4, slide. So it's a respectable 28. It's uh, actually a little bit less than you get mid screen, but you got to work with what you got to work with. Uh, you can sneak in those extra dabs. I would say just try it out yourself. Once again, you get up to seven in a row before you go for 114. Uh, just see what works for you. But to me, five is kind of the golden easy thing without just sacrificing too much damage. But yeah, so the corner is not where he excels. I guess what I'm trying to say. You definitely want to keep him more in the mid screen where you can kind of just work your magic and. You know, I guess literally work your magic, right? Um, and just, you know, do what works best for you with a lot of judicious 424s, you know, ground explosion, skull, corpse drops, all that fun stuff. You know, that's where his bread is buttered. And the corner gets a little weaker. Now, obviously, keeping them um, in the corner, they're weaker too. You know, keep throws and all the pressure, but your, your damage is going to drop. So watch out for that. And yeah, that's the end of this video. So all in all, I think Shang Tsung is a very strong character. I don't think he's top tier though, but I do think he has everything he needs to win. He has his defined strength, and that's definitely his range game. Uh, he's serviceable mid-screen, especially with the strength of 424 and the poke of uh, Soul Steel and all that kind of stuff. Very serviceable mid-screen. Uh, up close, he suffers a little bit. Uh, the only fast uh, move he has really contend in the scramble situations, like stuff like back three, which is not as great. But, you know, not every character needs to be the best at every single possible situation, right? Uh, so that's it for me. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has found you well. Go and play some Mortal Kombat. <laughs>